Hey everyone, welcome to Nerding IO. I'm JD, and today we're going to be continuing looking at the Lang Smith Cookbook and specifically building a uh, testing example where we look at question and answer. So, before we get into that, I just wanted to talk about Ever Efficient AI. This is our AI development productized uh, subscription model. So if you have any AI development needs, please reach out to us. You can find us in the comments. All right, so today what we're going to look at is the, the Q&A correctiveness system. So again, we're gonna look at this cookbook example. They have a folder testing examples. Uh, and then the things that we're gonna cover are going to be creating a, a data set, which is new for us, and then we're gonna be defining our question and answer system, actually running an evaluation through Langsmith, and then iterating to improve the system and, and see how that looks. So the, the first things that, in order to do this, we're gonna look at our dependencies before we even create our data set. So again, we're gonna be running Jupyter Notebook, <clears throat> Uh, which you can run in your terminal. You see I have it running in the background here. But you're also going to want to make sure that Langchang is up to date. We're going to be installing Chroma DB, which for our data set and vector uh, storage. And then these other two packages specifically for document loading. So quickly, let's talk about Chroma. Uh, we're going to do a follow-up video on this specifically, but the reason that we love Chroma is because it's open source, which means that we can run this for free locally. They're also talking about having a hosted product. Um, it makes it super, super easy. Uh, of course, since we're gonna be doing things uh, in both Python and JavaScript, it's also great that they have a JavaScript client. Both of these, uh, both of these work specifically with Langchain, um, which makes it incredibly awesome. So with that said, go ahead and spin up your uh, Jupyter Notebook, make sure you clone everything down, and once you have that up and running, we'll go ahead and take a look. Alright, so once you have your Jupyter Notebook up and running, we can, uh, you're going to make sure that you launch the QA correctiveness, and we'll go through uh, what this looks like. So we already talked about our prerequisites, so the first thing that we're going to do now that we have things like Chroma installed and our document loader is we're going to build out a data set. The really cool thing is that in this cookbook they actually give us an example. So the way that this looks is you essentially have a, an array, a dictionary that um, has both the, let's find a good one, a question and then an answer. So these are static examples, they're, they're hard-coded uh, in a future video, we'll start talking about dynamic data. They also have an example for that. And what we're going to do in order to create this data set is start running this code. So the first thing we're doing is defining what our data set is going to be. Now we're implementing or importing Langsmith. Remember, you need to have the uh, API keys set up. So both your OpenAI key and your Langchain API key. Again, we've been doing this in the previous project. So if you haven't checked, uh, had a chance to set that up specifically, you can, uh, all you have to do is put in environment variables, but um, we have previous videos on that. So let's continue on. So now that we have our examples at least saved, now we're importing. Now we're defining what our data set is going to be. And then we're gonna loop through all of these examples. So let's run again. We didn't get any errors, that's good. Now we're gonna define our Q&A system. And what we're gonna be doing for that is we're using our vector store retriever. And that's going to use the OpenAI embeddings model. And then our vector store, which is where we're gonna store the, the chunk, well, the, the, splitting, the split information and embedding specifically into our uh, vector storage of Chroma. Then we have our chat prompt template and we'll be using the GPT 3.5 Turbo 
as our LLM. So let's keep going and have this run and define what our splitter, our, uh, splitter is. The other thing is the, the recursive URL loader is um, pulling in the Langsmith, the docs. So, and that, that is, think of that as like the, uh, the source information that we're, that we're getting, right? The, um, these examples are questions that we're testing against. All right, so now that we have our retriever that's running, we're gonna go down and run our embedding. And cool. Now we're gonna define, oh, we've got an issue. Let's figure out what that is. So reading this, it's just saying uh, that it it's using an HTML parser. If it's XML, we should use a parser. I think that's fine. It's, uh, so we're gonna continue with our embeddings. And uh, next, we'll be defining our prompt template. So in our prompt template, this is essentially how we're structuring our message. So we're defining the fact that we want it to be a helpful Q&A assistant. We're specifically looking at questions from the Langsmith documentation, and we're going to answer based on, on that information that, we'll, we'll, uh, that we just created these vectors with. So let's go ahead and run our prompt uh, template. And now we can assemble the full chain. So what we're doing here is we're saying that we're creating a runnable map. We're taking our documents that have been split and we're putting that in it. So basically it's going the getter, the then we're piping the retriever, then we're piping the, the lambda of the docs. And that's in order to get all our information. And then we're doing an item getter of what the question is. So let's run this and we'll run our first question. So here we're gonna be putting together a, a, a token stream and asking it, how long do I, how, long, how do I log user feedback to a run? So now we can see that it's doing the stream and we're getting our expected result. So this is really cool. It actually also gives a TypeScript example. Um, so that's awesome. It says that it needs to provide our run ID, our feedback key, and yeah, this is this is great. And even define our API uh, model. So very cool. So what we can do is we can actually look at this and start to evaluate. So before we actually run the evaluation on our chain, let's go look at Langsmith and see what we have as our sequence. So these arguments uh, were from our last video. This runnable sequence is what we just did. And you can see the input is our question. So let's take a look at our chain. So this is really awesome. It's actually giving us all the, the information from our log, giving us our latency, we can see our, our uh, runnable map, and then our prompt template, and then, so this is where it's pulling the information from, as well as the response that we're getting back, um, and our final parse. So we can check there's no feedback, this is the, the metadata that we have at the time. Remember in the last video, we customized some of this. So let's go back to our, uh, to run to our notebook and let's run the evaluation. So we have our output. So now we're gonna go in and run our evaluator on our Q and A. And then we're actually going to look at the uh, 
have it run in the evaluation and do prediction over the uh, the Q and A correctiveness. So let's make sure we actually run this. All right, and now what we can do is we can actually, if you don't have Linksmith, you can actually look here, but what we're gonna look at is this feedback and try and see what uh, we can find with our, our evaluation. So we did look at the chain, now let's go back to Linksmith and start looking at our correctiveness. So if we go back to our tutorial, we see we have another uh, runnable sequence. Oops, sorry. So we want to go back and look at the uh, feedback of runnable sequence two. We have our user feedback. So, and actually what I, I made a mistake, we want to go back and look at our evaluation results for this sequence that's being returned. So we can take a look at that and, okay. So now this has our uh, data set and our correctiveness. So it's looking at all of these examples that we had put in and we can now see our correctiveness feedback. We can see how it was running through we can see what is the, the question, so what is lang chain, and then we can see our output. So basically on this, uh, these traces for all these examples that we just ran through, it's giving us our chain and our status uh, and our feedback, right? So the other thing that it's showing, it's kind of hard to see, uh, but there's a function here that's saying and equal feedback key correctiveness and the score of zero is part of the filter. So what we can try and do on this, and I'll, I'll blow this up so it's a little easier to see, is basically we can write here in our traces to do a, a function, a filter function. So hopefully you can see that I'll blow it up. But basically it's and equal feedback key correctiveness EQ feedback score zero. Um, we, on this one, we have a correct uh, correctness of one. So if we change that to one, then it'll filter on our feedback here. So let's see what else they have. So the high, so we can actually run the evaluator so, um, and uh, again, you can open in Playground if there is something marked incorrect, as well as editing uh, in the Playground itself. The Playground itself allows you to, to essentially do test runs, and all of these are actually tracked inside of Langsmith. So we'll kind of, uh, when I go into the uh, open playground, it says that this particular one isn't, isn't set up for, for working on that. However, if we go back to our projects, you can see some cool things. So you'll notice that on our tracing cookbook, we have a feedback score now. Um, you also have this ability to look at evaluators and uh, there is, a, by default, there is a playground inside of Langsmith, so you can go in here and actually, uh, you know, type in and, and try and uh, use this particular chain as a playground. So this is essentially just like an editor, um, so you can put in whatever kind of input and then submit, and then it'll actually run. Um, which is pretty sweet. All right, so let's go back and let's iterate now. So what we're doing in this is we're showing that we actually wanna take this uh, same, essentially same prompt, but now we're gonna add some, uh, some specific information. And then this one, what we're telling it to do 
is if you don't have an answer, just respond with you don't have an answer. You know, do the best you can, but otherwise make the, uh, the user aware um, that you don't know the answer. So that's the only addition that we're going to be making, but it's a good example of how to go back and iterate through this. Now we'll go ahead and make a run. We will rerun our evaluation. So again, we're looking at these, uh, the, the data set. So let's go ahead and do that. Again, we have our, our link here. Let's go take a look. So now we have a different run and let's go back to uh, what we're what we're looking for. So it looks like it, it's showing that it's just passing all the examples uh, and we still have our correctiveness. We can still run our, okay, so here we go. Now we have a correctness of zero, um, which we can click on and, and look through.